The former president of the United States of America, Barack Obama, making some interesting comments on a podcast recently. What seems to be about woke culture and this idea of canceling people for things that they say or do or uh, whatever the case may be, uh, is it something that the American public is receptive to or does he see a bit of a pushback? We'll get to the uh, the former president's comments here in a moment, uh, but definitely want to hear from you at 217-629-7970. That's the phone number here with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk, now 712, and we've got about 31 degrees on its way to 46 the high with sunny skies. All right, uh, so let's get to this. Uh, early voting has been underway in in Illinois for quite some time, even the former president, Barack Obama, and the former first lady, Michelle Obama, in Chicago yesterday to cast their ballot early. Uh, the two went to their home city. Uh, it's actually where Michelle Obama was born and where Barack Obama lived a good chunk of his life, uh, where he served in the state legislature here in Illinois, uh, and then as a U.S. senator from Illinois, and then becoming the president of the United States. Uh, so they uh, they visited Chicago to vote, and uh, the president even joked that he missed the um, one-time punch-style ballots. Uh, if you remember those where you get a little key and then you punch it into the hole. Led to all those hanging chads in the uh, 2000 election down in Florida. Uh, but uh, everybody learned what a hanging chad was back then. Um, but he said it was a way you know, back then with the punch ballots to get some aggression out, some frustrations. And I think that's what a lot of people are heading to the polls all about. Now, um, the Obamas were just one of tens of thousands of people who have early voted so far in Illinois. Uh, so the latest data from the State Board of Elections shows that 729,000 vote-by-mail ballots have not been requested. So that's uh, you know, a few weeks ago. It was uh, close to 500,000. Now there are 729,000 mail-in ballots that have been requested. So we're going to have to wait for all 700. 29,000 of those to get back to the uh, various elections authority to count those on election night. And it could actually take up to two weeks for those votes. But with those who have turned their election uh, vote by mail ballots in already and those who have early voted, the total number is around 178,000 Illinoisans have already voted for the midterm election. And the election is November 8th. Uh, a bit later on, we're going to be talking about uh, some some of the issues that are in front of voters. And, uh, you know, that's that's something I think is very important uh, that we unpack. And I want to hear from you what you think are some of the major issues. Uh, but the former president, Barack Obama, he recently went on Pod Save America, a, a, a podcast where he made uh, some statements about uh, uh, the, the Democratic Party and uh, the trajectory. He says that they're taking the country. Uh, and in particular, uh, how he feels that uh, some things may just go too far. Uh, and he talked about how uh, there's this uh, understanding that policy is important, but not getting into the policy garbledy gook. He uh, encouraged politicians to really get on the level of uh, families across the country and how they are um, you know, feeling in, in, in any particular election environment. Uh, so here is uh, the former president talking about how Democrats might go too far in some of their rhetoric. Uh, again, former President Barack Obama. My family, my kids, you know, work that gives me satisfaction, uh, you know, having fun, you know, not, you know, not, not being a buzzkill, right? <laughs> uh, you know, That's so, a lesson for the Democratic Party. Yeah, yeah and, and sometimes Democrats are, right? It's, it's like, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, People just want to not feel as if uh, they are walking on eggshells, uh, and 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 they want some acknowledgement that life is messy, and that all of us, at any given moment, uh, can you know uh, say things the wrong way, you know, make mistakes. Uh, Michelle talks uh, about her mother-in-law, or her mother, my mother-in-law, who is. A, a extraordinary one, but as Michelle points out, she's 86, you know. And sometimes, it, you know, trying to get the right phraseology when we're talking about issues, Michelle's like, that's like her trying to learn Spanish. It doesn't mean she shouldn't try to learn Spanish, but it means that sometimes she's not going to get the words right. 
uh, and that's okay, right? And 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 that attitude, I think, uh, of just being a little more real and a little more grounded is is something that I think makes a, goes a long way in in counteracting what is a systematic um, this the the systematic propaganda that I think is being pumped out by Fox News and all these other outlets all the so time. again uh, the former president uh, seeming to talk about uh, going too far with uh, criticizing people for not using the right terms or the right pronouns for instance you're hearing a lot about that type of thing uh, but I want to get your reaction to this 217-629-7970 again 217-629-7970 uh, just to go over again some of the uh, the quotes from the the former president uh, he said, uh, you know, in that podcast, Pod Save America, uh, he said uh, that Democrats have strayed away from a message of equity to scolding on social issues. He said, my family, my kids work that gives me satisfaction, having fun, hell, not being a buzzkill. And sometimes Democrats are, the former president said. He said, sometimes people just want to not feel as if they're walking on eggshells and they want some acknowledgement that life is messy. And that uh, all of us at any given moment can say things that are wrong and make mistakes. So the the former president making this this kind of um, what some of you out there might say is is an apparent uh, issue that we face in our current uh, discussions and discourse about politics is too often people just shut down another side with ad hominem attacks, either calling them racist or bigots without actually listening to what some of the concerns are. Uh, So your thoughts on that. Also, I want to hear from you about uh, what are some of the top issues this election. Uh, So get those phone calls in. We'll talk about that next here with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News. Well, somebody just shared with me uh, audio of... The current First Lady, Jill Biden, getting booed at uh, a football game. Here's a bit of that. Could this be uh, a bit of the um, sentiments that people are feeling heading into the November election? Uh, people yelling, let's go, Brandon. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think uh, you, you you have that uh, stacked on top of what um, the former President uh, Barack Obama had to say uh, about people not wanting to walk on eggshells. Uh, and it raises the, the question of what are some of the major issues that uh, voters have in mind heading into the November 8th general election. Uh, and uh, obviously, you've got polling data uh, across the board. Polls are going to be coming out up until Election Day. Uh, It's really kind of, uh, in a way, gauge what the public's sentiments are here. Uh, But in Illinois, we've got a gubernatorial race, and it looks like at least the most recent polling indicating that uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker has uh, uh, a a double-digit lead over the Republican challenger, Darren Bailey, uh, with the Libertarian candidate actually getting about 8%. Uh, But there's still a a substantial amount of people that are unsure as to who they're going to support. 9% of people in the race uh, for governor uh, say that they don't know who they're going to support yet. So that'll be interesting to see how that trans- translates onto election day. Uh, but what's fascinating about these types of polls is they also try to gauge uh, what people um, are, are saying are some of the top issues. Uh, and uh, if you look at this particular uh, poll from uh, the Chicago Sun-Times, that uh, you see uh, some of the issues that uh, voters are uh, of most concern with. Uh, And uh, 29% of those polled in the Sun-Times poll said that jobs in the economy were top of mind. 29%. Uh, You've got uh, 22% saying crime and public safety are the top concern. And then uh, 12% saying election integrity. Uh, So those are obviously some some big things that uh, people are keeping in mind. Uh, But when you talk about um, public safety, some of the conversation centers around uh, that of uh, uh, the Safety Act. And that's a pretty contentious piece of legislation that uh, Democratic State Senator Robert Peters defends because he helped get it passed in the no cash bail provision. Uh, He recently said in a forum that, uh, you know, this. This, this issue of crime seems to be uh, being artificially inflated. As we get somehow close to the month of November, um, someone has decided to say that this is the most important thing. 
You also have others reacting, uh, including State Representative Ryan Spain, a Republican from Peoria. He said that, uh, yeah, crime's an issue, the economy's an issue, but with Friday's indictment of Mike Madigan, now a 23rd charge on top of 22 other charges in a separate case with ComEd, Friday Madigan was charged in a case involving AT&T Illinois. It raises the issue of corruption quite a bit. Here's uh, Ryan Spain. Number one, the economy. Number two, uh, public safety and and just major problems uh, with the Democrats' uh, uh, crime bills, uh, the, the the Safety Act. But number three now, thrust back front and center, is public corruption. So your thoughts, what are your major issues heading into the election? Good morning, you're on WMAY. Good morning, Greg. Hey. I've never voted a straight ticket in my entire life. I was born and raised in Ah, your phone's breaking up a little bit. You said you've never voted a straight ticket your entire life. You were born and raised, and it dropped. Born and raised a Democrat. Okay. Never never voted a straight ticket in my life. This year, I will be voting straight Republican. No ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, what, are the, what are the major issues for you uh, that, uh, that you're heading to the polls about? Crime, crime, taxes. Uh, cost of living. I mean, every single thing. I, I, I got a great job. I make great money. And I'm, I mean, I'm just talking to my buddies at work. I, I got, I think I might have to get, I got a lawn care business on the side. I might have to pick up a job in the winter for extra money. And I make damn good money. Yeah, your 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 dollar's not going as far as you uh, huh. once thought it could. And uh, uh, there's I'm a lot of policies. In, Right now, I'm pulling into McDonald's. Right, mm-hmm. a year ago, the meal that I'm getting was a dollar thirty nine cheaper. Wow, one year, dollar thirty nine. I know a dollar thirty nine don't seem like a lot. It adds up though. If it's every it day, you're hitting that up. When you do it five days yeah, a week, exactly right. Right. And and one more thing is, uh, I lost my train of thought. Have a good day. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Be safe out there and enjoy your breakfast. Uh, good morning. You're on WMAY. Ah, you would have been, uh, but obviously talking about uh, the election coming up uh, November 8th, and uh, you're going to be heading to the polls if you haven't already. Early voting is underway. You do have a uh, debate between uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker and uh, challenger Darren Bailey tonight. That's going to be out of Chicago, broadcast on uh, TV stations across the state. Uh, we will be bringing you highlights of that tomorrow morning here with Springfield's Morning News on WMAY. Uh, appreciate it. You you can always chime in live and local at 217-629-7970. That's the phone number here with Springfield's Morning News. Let's get to one phone call here before the news. Good morning. You're on WMAY. Good morning, Greg. Hey. Some of my main concerns are with the current governor or what is being taught in schools. He's a pro-abortion governor. Uh, we have some of the highest property taxes in the U.S. Uh, we have the highest pension debts, state departure, people leaving Illinois, uh, crime is at its worst, and this this safety act that they have coming up really concerns a lot of citizens. We're the fourth worst job openings in the U.S., so I think when we're at the bottom like that, I think it's time to to think about maybe getting another candidate in there for governor. So, uh, yeah, I, I take it uh, you're you're going to not vote for J.B. Pritzker, in other words. Uh, are you uh, voting right. for Bailey or are you voting for the Libertarian? Are you sharing? Uh, you comfortable sharing that? I will. Yes, I will vote for Bailey. Gotcha. I've met him in person. He, he has reached out to a lot of people. He also he's trying to reach out to uh, Chicago. and He's even residing up there and also yep. has his farm. We need our farmers. And uh, he, that man... He knows what reality is about. He's not a billionaire. I'm not against billionaires, but he's more towards the common people, you and me. And so I think that he would, we need to give him a chance. And listen, that's obviously a high profile race in Illinois. Uh, but as far as down ballot, uh, do you uh, uh, have your mind made up on the state house who you want to support you in the state Senate and the state house? And uh, what about amendment one? Have you put thought behind those things as well? And then that one, I would say vote no one because I think that's going to be very adverse, especially uh, it's going to affect people's property taxes, which could, could double. I don't think a lot of people realize that that could be uh, something that could happen if Amendment 1. And plus, um, I'm not anti-union, but I think that uh, sometimes when you get unions get in too much control, then the legislature has no more power over them. And we need the state legislatures to make our decisions for us. 
Well, I appreciate you sharing your thoughts this morning, and that's what we do. We open the phone lines to hear from people uh, there on the streets uh, who are taxpayers, who are heading to the polls, and uh, interesting to gauge some of that sentiment. Of course, it's always open, and for you to sound off at 217-629-7970. All right.